on the East Coast this week. They're also thawing out in Washington, where lawmakers have been working overtime to reach a deal on the latest coronavirus relief bill. This on the same week, the Electoral College finally made things official in the race for president, with more Republicans now acknowledging Joe Biden as the president-elect, including both of Indiana's Republican senators. Here's Washington correspondent Raquel Martin. With the electoral votes cast. The electoral college has spoken. And with the Senate chaplain's blessing. Bless President-elect Joseph Biden. Tuesday, for the first time, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell officially recognized the next president. So today I want to congratulate President-elect Joe Biden. The president-elect is no stranger to the Senate. He's devoted himself to public service. And he's not alone. Iowa Senator Joni Ernst, Missouri Senator Roy Blunt, and Indiana Senator Todd Young are among a growing list of Republican lawmakers now accepting the president's defeat. It's very important that each of us pledges to work with uh, President-elect Biden. The acknowledgement comes more than a month after Biden claimed victory and after weeks of failed legal challenges from the Trump campaign and supporters. The conservative-leaning Supreme Court summarily dismissed this effort outright rejecting the lawsuit. Illinois Democratic Senator Dick Durbin says he's glad some Senate Republicans are accepting reality. Enough is enough. But Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says all Republicans must follow suit. For the sake of our democracy, for the sake of the peaceful transition of power. Yesterday's vote was one step in the constitutional process. But White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany says the president isn't ready to back down. The president is still involved in ongoing litigation. One final step lies ahead. House lawmakers will certify the Electoral College vote results on January 6th. In Washington, Raquel Martin. Now this week, Senator Mike Braun called the vote a watershed moment where we must put aside politics and respect the constitutional process. Susan Brooks said the Electoral College has spoken, congratulating President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris. She said, quote, it is time for America to move forward. And Congressman Andre Carson said, I hope this milestone encourages my GOP colleagues to work with the incoming administration to solve the crises our country is facing. Here in Indiana, as our state's electors met on Monday, GOP Chair Kyle Hupfer told us he felt the president had the right to make his case in court, as our Russ McQuaid reports. The Indiana Electoral College of 2020 is now convened. Indiana Secretary of State Connie Lawson gaveled the state's Electoral College into session inside the House chambers of the Indiana State House. In all, Indiana has 11 electors, and all of them went to President Trump. He captured 1.7 million votes last month, compared to Joe Biden's 1.2 million ballots. Though the results of today's Electoral College polling seem to be final, a top Republican Party leader remains steadfast in his support of the president's legal campaign to overturn the November election results. I'm not the president's lawyers. Um, you know, he has his own team. As I've said from the beginning, I think the president has the right uh, and the duty if he feels like there are inconsistencies uh, in election results to uh, pursue any legal remedy that's out there to him. Um, and so I'd leave that to him and his attorneys to figure out what that course of action is. I asked GOP Party Chairman Kyle Hupfer if he supports the efforts of outgoing Attorney General Curtis Hill and incoming AG Todd Rokita, both Republicans, who joined a lawsuit filed by the Attorney General of Texas to overturn vote results in four states. I wasn't asked. I'm asking you now. I, I wasn't asked. That's not my job. We had an election on November 3rd. The Supreme Court, just hours after uh, one of our members of Congress signed on to the, the support of the lawsuit, uh, threw it down uh, with no public dissent. I think this is just a political tactic by Republicans to raise money for a defeated president. Uh, to try to help save their party, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Five Indiana lawmakers put their support behind that failed lawsuit from Texas, Representatives Baird, Banks, Hollingsworth, Pence, and Wolarski. Meantime, President